Welcome to the 8th lecture in the Art of Hacking Humans Introduction to Social Engineering presented by Dauda Sule. In this lecture, we'll be focusing on phishing. Phishing is a deceptive technique used to gain access to sensitive data and confidential information by imitating a well-known genuine source. Malicious individuals usually use phishing to gain access to sensitive information like banking and card credentials. They can also use it to compromise login details such that they can gain access to an individual or a group of individuals' email accounts or other similar accounts like social media accounts which they can use to launch further attacks or acts of compromise. Phishing is usually used to gain access to sensitive data using email messages, SMS, voice messages, and so on. So it's kind of similar to pretexting in that it uses communication. The messages sent usually come with a fake URL or a clone of a genuine site in the URL, that is a URL leading to a clone of the genuine site, or a logon screen that is used for compromise. The fake URL, once clicked, might end up infecting a system with malware, which can compromise the system or be used to spread further attacks. A clone of a genuine site may be sent in the phishing email or message such that that is used to, like his email or even banking website or something like that, an exact replica of it would come up with the logon screen. So once the user logs in with his genuine credentials, it's as good as he has given it completely to the malicious attacker, and hence his account is compromised. The malicious individual can then use these compromised logon details to carry out further attacks. They could use that to compromise the individual or the individual's organization or use it to compromise other organizations. As they can use compromised accounts to create botnets, that's robot networks, which they can use to compromise systems. There are different forms of phishing like smishing, vision, and spear phishing. Smishing is a form of phishing that is sent via SMS messages. Phishing is usually more popularly sent using emails. So smishing is a variation that uses SMS messages, that's text messages, mobile text messages, using the short messaging system. Vision is a form of phishing that uses voice messages. That is, the phishing messages are sent using voice messages, whether recorded or by direct calling, which makes it more similar to pretexting. As for spear phishing, it is more targeted in nature. Spear phishing targets a particular group of people, a specific group of people. The general phishing could just be spread to anybody at all, sent at random to ev just everybody. But spear phishing could be targeted to an organization like employees of an organization, or to banks generally, or to banking customers, people who have accounts in banks, so as to compromise their accounts, and it could be to a specific bank. So phishing is quite similar to protection in that both deceive victims into thinking they are communicating with a genuine source, that is, a genuine authorized entity, in order for them to get compromised. Phishing messages take advantage of human weaknesses like gullibility, lack of awareness, and fear. Now, human beings could be easily deceived into thinking a message is genuine, hence they fall for the phishing messages. And of course, a lack of awareness of phishing as a social engineering technique or a way that malicious individuals compromise victims can make you easy prey to phishing messages. That is phishing attacks. Of course, there's also the case of fear. Of course, there's the fear of losing something, like phishing messages which threaten that an account will be blocked if an update is not done and things like that. 
or they send messages that um, a debit was done on your account and you are afraid of losing money so they give you a link that is supposed to be clicked for you to clarify such an issue phishing can best be avoided with awareness and vigilance organizations should always ensure they train their employees and customers to make them aware of social engineering techniques that can be used to compromise them they should make them conscious of cyber security issues so issues like phishing should be made known to them and how they can avoid it how they can recognize it so that they can avoid it and as an individual or an organization too you need to be extra vigilant because in this day and age there are many techniques used by malicious individuals to compromise you we can see the case of institutions and organizations like banks which usually send messages to their customers notifying them that the banks do not send messages requesting sensitive data and they should avoid clicking on links in emails that are supposed to lead them to their online banking site or rather they should go straight to the bank's website and click on the link from there now this is an example of a phishing message it is an alleged security warning from Facebook showing that uh, some unusual activities were detected on your account and uh, attempts to export your open graph file whatever that is using an unauthorized application located here right here which probably if you click on that you will get compromised your account will be suspended if this action is not discontinued last login details uh, you see that supposedly in China I've never been to China of course so that will make me be afraid and on the alert that somebody is trying to compromise my account and all that the IP address ISP and so on or the Chinese ISP as currently if this was not you it is possible that your account may have been compromised use the link below to update your security settings so you see that that will so clearly that is a way to deceive you into clicking the link and this particular message does not do a very good job at disguising the URL this looks quite suspicious and unlikely to be a Facebook URL but they didn't mask it too much they put so much things after their facebook.com which makes it look unrealistic you could have some that mask it they will give you a link that clearly looks like facebook.com and when you hover your mouse over the link you will see the details different from what is on the link as you can see here at the bottom of the web page you can see that the URL the actual URL is shown so in this case this one's URL is the same as that in the email but of course like I said there can be some which put a fake URL here that looks like the real one but once you put your mouse over it the actual URL can be seen which can help you to avoid being compromised however there are some that remain the same even if you put your mouse cursor there here's another phishing message telling you that a debit of had 10,500 and some change were deducted from your account this is similar to the message of this bank's uh, email alerts this message is a replica of this bank's email alerts the description saying it is the a debit for a monthly customer digest subscription if you are aware you would know whether or not you subscribe for a monthly customer digest and also that custom monthly customer digest are just PDF magazines sent for free that's for banks that send that I'm not sure if this bank specifically sends monthly customer digests I don't think they do then they give you a link to use to cancel the alleged subscription and you can see by hovering your cursor over that it shows you a short URL the 
even carry the actual customer contact center numbers and everything and you can see that this specific banner here looks rather fuzzy it's not clear it's like it's just a picture a snapshot that was taken and it wasn't even taken very clearly so it looks kind of faded and those are some of the signs you can use to identify that this is a fake message you can see the sender it is from Diamond Bank servers at ibedc.com but if you are aware of the bank's customer contact emails these are definitely not that it rather comes as something at diamondbank.com you can see it's also going to who so you can see that the sender and the receiver are the same ideally the message should be specifically to you and tailored to you so it should be to your email and it would be addressed to you saying dear you or hello you attention you your name would be there so that's just a sample phishing email and some ways you can identify a phishing email the message I just put was in the print preview you can see in the actual message it comes as you but once you hover your mouse there instead of showing your email address it shows their own fake email address this is an awareness message from the bank you see this is the bank which was used by the malicious individuals to send phishing messages which I have shown before this is from them you see how their own emails come no reply at the bank's url.com and sent to your own email address it is addressing you directly and tells you to always ensure that you check that the sender of the messages from this specific bank are uh, this no reply at diamondbank.com before you respond to the mail it also tells you that their contact center will never call you to request that you click or respond to any email and it gives you their contact their customer contact number so that you can identify it if you are called from that and it tells you that their staff email addresses do not contain their first name or full stops their emails will always address you by your full name they also go ahead to show some samples of fraudulent messages that are going around here is a sample smishing message says dear customer due to our, our new DVN system upgrade your ATM card has been deactivated for reactivation, kindly call our customer care number on this number now. And you can see that this number is different from the actual customer contact center number. Here's a sample email message. You can see it comes as QQ uh, so many W's at whateverbank.com and sent to blah blah blah. See that supposedly from is is supposedly from an employee of the bank claiming to be uh, allegedly on leave it comes you see the structure is not even proper these are on the same straight line without entering this I'm currently on vacation all mails requiring my attention should be sent to who is this copying so 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 with a number here which is probably a fraudulent number or a compromised number another one here saying that you successfully purchased a flight ticket at 42,000 from the bank it gives the name blah 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 some details of the alleged transaction and the ticket and it gives you a link to click to cancel or terminate the transaction which will be a link to compromise you so you can see this specific bank is quite proactive in informing its customers helping to keep them aware and protect them from fraudulent malicious individuals so other banks do this as well and so organizations should also do that for their customers and you can expect that such banks would also train their staff their employees on such issues and how to protect themselves from that and also to protect their customers so that brings us to the end of this lecture See you in the next lecture.